In this series, we've already covered some pretty messed up moments in comics. Whether it be Batman and Black Canary doing a horizontal tango on a dock, while thugs are literally burning alive behind them, which Batman set ablaze, by the way, the unique relationship between Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver in the Ultimate Universe, and even the fact that Aunt May is secretly Peter's mom. It's time to stop! And in today's video, we're going over Volume 7 of my series, Messed Up Moments in Comics, that made us go... Hey yo, what the f With that being said, let's get into this. Part 71. This is Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe, and it absolutely lives up to the title. But let me explain. Deadpool usually has a couple voices in his head, but in this story, it's replaced by just the one. And unfortunately, it has one motivation. Take out everyone in the Marvel Universe. And he absolutely follows through. He takes out Owatu the Watcher with ease, squashes Spider-Man like the buggy is, steals Hank Pym's technology and simultaneously nukes the Avengers, leaving only a few of them left, which he easily takes out like Thor using Hank Pym's technology to make Mjolnir enormous and crush him, until Hulk finally puts a stop to his rampage. Until he turns to Bruce Banner in his sleep and Deadpool takes him out. He then systematically takes out the X-Men, fights Wolverine while wearing Beast's pelt. He gets the Punisher, before moving on to cosmic beings like Thanos and Silver Surfer, uses Man-Thing to take out Taskmaster, before going in the real world and taking out the writers. Messed up moments in comics that made us go... What the f*** is that? Part 72. This is Mystique from Marvel Comics. You might recognize her from her appearance in the X-Men movies. But did you know that she's actually a mom to one of the X-Men members? Or, I guess, technically a dad now. Let's talk about it. In the old canon, it was established that Mystique was the mother of Nightcrawler, who she had with this character, Azazel, who you might recognize from X-Men First Class. But just recently, she was talking with the uncanny Spider-Man, who, big surprise, they somehow roped in Spider-Man, but don't worry, it's actually Nightcrawler, and she told him the entire story that we all thought was his real origin was a lie. As it turns out, Mystique was in a relationship with another woman. Which isn't the problem here. You'll see what I mean. Mystique pulls the Jada Pinkett Smith and calls her relationship with Azazel an entanglement. After breaking it off, she impregnates her girlfriend. And before it was established, Mystique was the one who gave birth, but not anymore. Where's this guy reaching? Part 73. This is the Lord of Apocalypse, seeker of the anti-life equation, Darkseid. And this is the story of the one person who's able to beat him once a year. Incredibly powerful villain. He can solo the new gods, can basically take out the Justice League on his own, and is quite possibly one of the most famous big bads that DC has. So you might be thinking to yourself, who could beat him? In this two-page story, we see one of Darkseid's underlings bringing news. He states, he has gotten past all of our defenses. Another underling states that the satellites have been disabled and the flying parademons are helpless. Grounded air forces are ineffective to this threat. Then they say he's here. Darkseid asks, on the planet? And the thug says, no, he's in the room. That's when we see the threat that Darkseid faces every year. It's none other than Santa Claus. Every year, Santa hand delivers a lump of coal to Darkseid and escapes without a scratch. Part 74. This is a one-shot known as Darkhold Spider-Man, and it might be one of the most messed up versions of the character. But why? In this comic, New York is crumbling, and the only thing keeping it together is Spider-Man's webs. More messed up than that is the fact that basically everyone's turned into zombies, including supervillains like Doc Ock pictured here. After every time they fight, Peter puts the villains back together again. But now he's being summoned by Reed Richards. When he goes into the Baxter building, he sees this horrific scene. Yeah, that right there is one of the smartest men in the multiverse. What the heck? The two argue for a while, and Peter decides he needs to find a new, stronger web fluid. So he takes a sonic gun to track down Venom, since he would have stronger webbing. However, when Peter finds Venom, he sees that Eddie Brock's life was drained by the symbiote. And in an act of kindness, the symbiote rejects Peter so he would live. Mr. Fantastic shows a new webbing that's even stronger, but it's made from his own body. Peter gets pretty desperate and uses Reed as new webbing, but he's still alive. Part 75. This is Police Captain Jean DeWolf. And this is how she lost her life. Jean was a close personal friend of Spider-Man. I know, big surprise, but just hang on. The story starts with her fellow officers finding her already passed on in her apartment. Peter is racked with guilt trying to find out who did this. Was it Doc Ock? Mysterio? Green Goblin? No, actually. And that's the messed up part. Because it turns out it wasn't a supervillain. It was a new character called Sin Eater. No powers, no gimmicks. Just a crazed lunatic 
with a firearm. Spidey works with this man, Detective Stan Carter, to track down Sin Eater. Peter ends up crossing paths with Daredevil after a misconception, and Sin Eater even tries to take him out, but he was actually going for a judge that Matt Murdock was close friends with. At one point, Sin Eater even tries to go after Betty Brandt. That's when we find out that all along, Sin Eater was actually Stan Carter himself, and he ended up taking out a superior officer, but it wasn't a supervillain just a guy messed up moments in comics that made us go hey yo what the f part 76 we're all familiar with bruce banner and the hulk but what about the time they separated that's right friends in the comics dr doom was able to physically remove bruce banner from the hulk creating two separate entities both of which able to live their own lives after a while of being on his own hulk goes to a bar in which he gets thrown through a wall by this woman right here the red she hulk Otherwise known as Betty Ross, Bruce Banner's main love interest. The two of them start beating the crap out of each other until they're interrupted by this man known as Orb, who tells them that he needs their eyes. So they stop fighting and beat the crap out of Orb until they ask if they should continue their fight. One of Orb's henchmen asks if they're fighting each other again. That's what is revealed. Not quite. Instead, the two hulks start going at it. And go at it they did for two hours in public. Then he was Banner again? Part 77. This is Darkhold Iron Man, and just like the Spider-Man counterpart, this is seriously messed up. But let me explain why. The story starts with Pepper and Jarvis finding Tony in his Mark I armor, but they can already tell something's wrong. They try to remove pieces of Tony's armor until they remove one of his gauntlets and his skin comes with it. Frantically, they begin putting the armor back on, fearing they do even more damage. Tony says he's fixing his armor, basically turning it into a walking hospital that'll keep him safe. Time goes by and Tony continues to work on the project until Pepper finds Tony fused with his armor completely. White ooze leaking from every crack. They run some tests and it turns out he's permanently fused. He cannot remove it anymore. Tony made even more suits for people around the world. The Tony we know is gone. He even grabs Pepper and brings her to the suit he made just for her. This reminds me of something. Part 76. This is the Marvel Comics character known as Malice. But you may know her by a different name. That being the Invisible Woman herself, Sue Storm. And in this video, we're going to discuss how spousal abuse kind of saved her life. But let me explain. Sue's mind had been corrupted by a character known as the Hate Monger, basically bringing the subconscious dark side of the character forward and more or less unlocked her true potential. So she was easily able to take out basically all of the Fantastic Four. So you might be thinking to yourself, Alex, what did you mean by spousal abuse? Let me explain. In order to get Susan's personality to regain control, Reed Richards begins just berating her by saying, Susan, I told you to be quiet. We will not indulge your foolish female outbursts. My man goes on an unhinged rant before he straight up pimp slaps her. But here's the thing. It actually worked, and Susan was able to regain control. Part 79. This is Eobard Thawne, otherwise known as the Reverse Flash. And although he's Barry Allen's biggest rival, he's also his biggest fan? Let me explain. The Reverse Flash is actually from the future, and he completely idolized Barry Allen, up to the point of getting plastic surgery to look more like him. He even recreated the same accident that gave Barry his powers. But something was a little off. So instead of tapping into the speed force, he technically taps into the negative speed force. Just roll with me on this one. Because Reverse Flash can't actually remove Flash from the timeline, if you know what I mean, he gets revenge by hurting every single person close to Barry. For instance, his mother. And Barry going back in time to stop this from happening is actually what creates Flashpoint. So the Reverse Flash is a character that cannot take out his main adversary. So he ended up ending his arch nemesis's mother, making it so the guy can't go back in time and fix it, because it'll just create a paradox, which is why he can't take out the Flash in the first place. Part 80. This is the Ultimates issue 27. And in this comic, we see Reed Richards, otherwise known as the Maker in this universe, do something horrific to Iron Man. But I mean, it's comics. It couldn't be that bad. Or could it? In the Ultimates universe, Tony Stark consistently hallucinates this boy, a younger version of himself that he calls Anthony. And he's basically able to fully interact with Anthony. And it turns out Anthony was actually a manifestation of a brain tumor. But was it really a tumor? Because it turns out that it was never really a tumor. In fact, somehow, inexplicably even to the writers, Tony was growing an infinity gem inside of his brain. 
So the evil version of Reed Richards has Quicksilver track Iron Man down, where he preps Tony for open brain surgery and explains that he's trying to prevent a cataclysmic event by taking out the Infinity Gem, but after some bickering, he just rips it out by force and leaves Tony to pass away. Thank you so much for watching. New shorts release daily, sometimes twice a day. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe for more. And if you'd like to support the channel, consider becoming a member. If you'd like to see more, go ahead and click here or here. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I hope you have a great day, and I'll catch you in the next one.